Hi, this is Alex or Chasing Luminance, and I'm back again to show you how to use a sky tracker like the Move Shoot Move to actually create something like this. The cool thing about that time lapse was how I used the rotator to create that awesome panning motion. So I'm going to take you out into the field now to show you how I actually set up the move shoot move to not be a sky tracker, but to be that time lapse rotator. So let's jump to that now. Before we get out there, I need to let you know that this video is not being brought to you by Squarespace. It is not being brought to you by Skillshare, but it also isn't being brought to you by Adorama Picks or anybody else because I have like 30 subscribers. So if you could do me a huge favor and please click the like button and subscribe and maybe leave me a comment, that would be wonderful. So thank you in advance. Okay, now we're gonna jump out into the field. So now I'm set up on a cliff that's overlooking the neighborhood where I actually live. From up here, you get a really cool view of the neighborhood and all the houses. And also there's a highway going uh, right through this area. So I think I can get a time lapse with the stars moving over the top, but also a really cool view of all the cars moving underneath. So now I've got my camera set up on the rotator. For tonight, I have the rotator completely horizontal instead of pointing at the North Star because I don't really want to be tracking the stars. I just want to give a cool motion effect to this time lapse and the stars will be moving at the same speed as the camera because I'm going to set it on the star tracking setting. So the stars will be relatively still in the frame and you'll see the ground move below. It gives it a really cool effect and actually helps to show that we're the ones moving. The stars are still, but the earth is spinning. So I always love doing time lapses like this. I used my bubble level that is the portable one to level it. So I am going to run my camera. I'm going to be taking 15 second exposures at ISO 3200 because we are kind of close to town. I don't want to capture too much light. And I'm hopefully going to be able to run it for about three hours to get a really nice long time lapse. Kind of all depending on how well these batteries last. So I'm going to let this run and I will show you guys right now how I take these images and edit them on my computer. Now I had a great time out there. We were able to shoot for about three hours, so we have a ton of images to work with. Now I'm gonna jump into Lightroom. I've already imported those images and I'll show you how to do some basic edits and then combine those in Adobe Premiere Pro to create a time-lapse. Now that we're in the develop module here, we're working with the Camera Raw software. And when I do that, I like to work top to bottom. The first thing we would adjust is our white balance, but I pretty much like how it looks, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna come down here to the highlights though and decrease these because we have all of these town lights and the car lights going through. I do know that I wanna bring those down a bit. So we'll go down to right about there. I'm going to increase our shadows. I'm also going to reduce our whites and increase our blacks. Now with the texture and clarity and dehaze sliders, they can add some interesting detail to a lot of images, but an effect I've found that they generally have in night images is they increase and accentuate the noise. So I'm actually gonna reduce these by just a little bit. We're gonna go to negative 10 on both of these. I'm gonna leave the dehaze as it is and just increase the vibrance and saturation just a little bit. If we zoom in all the way, we can see there is a good bit of noise, which is expected shooting at ISO, what was it, 3200. So I'm going to use this noise reduction slider, the luminance noise reduction, and we're gonna set that to 20. This does a nice job of cleaning up the noise, but it does have a bit of a dulling effect on the details. So we're gonna be careful with this and not go too far. 
And the last thing I'm gonna do is an enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. I was shooting on a Rokinon lens, so I have to manually enter the profile I want. I'm gonna go with this 14 millimeter, this one here. You can see that does a nice job of flattening this image from there to there, and also it improves your corner sharpness and brightness a little bit. Now I like all of these edits, so I want to copy these edits throughout all of the images. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the library module, click here. Now selecting our first image and scrolling all the way to our last image right there. I'm going to shift click, right click. Oh no, shift click and then go to sync settings down here. With all of these selected, I'm going to click synchronize. Now Lightroom will automatically put the edits we made on the one image into all of them. So we'll click synchronize. Now that Lightroom has finished syncing all of these adjustments we made, I'm going to again select all of the images and right click and go to export. Now in this export box, I'm going to keep them in the same f folder as original photo, but I'm going to put them in a subfolder. I'm going to name that 12 millimeter for video. And now I can find this in Premiere and select all those and import them. I'm not going to adjust the size at all. I want to render them at maximum size so that it can create essentially like an 8K video once it's all finished. So the only thing I'm going to do is put select exactly where I want to put them and click export. Now all those photos are done exporting and I've opened Adobe Premiere Pro and I've opened a new project and I'm in the uh, editing module. And down here in the bottom left, I'm gonna double click where it says import media. And then I can find all of these videos under 12 millimeter for video. And a really cool tool that you can use with Premiere is the image sequencing tool. So just by clicking on the very first image in the sequence and then making sure this box is checked, I'll show you what that'll do real quick. So now that it's opened, it's made one file instead of like 900, like we could be dealing with one sequence file instead of all those individual ones. So just drag that into our timeline. So now that we have our sequence in the timeline, we can go into the effects column and depending on how you want to use your video, if you want to make it a part of a 1080 or 4K YouTube video or something like that, you need to change the ratio from the camera, which shoots in a 3-2 ratio, to the video, which is a generally a what a 9 by 16 ratio, which this black box automatically is. So in our effects module, we can go to scale here and slide that until it fills the frame perfectly, just like that. In this instance, it was 180%, but whatever works for how your images come out is perfect. And this is all the adjustments I wanna to make to it in Adobe Premiere. So I'm going to hit Control or Command M, and this will export all of the media, and this will open up in a new box. Now that we're in this box, I'm not gonna go through all the different options because it is quite extensive and you need to make sure that you're adjusting these for whichever project you wanna be working on. But just for kind of a safe go-to, I'm gonna go to YouTube 4K Ultra HD and I'm gonna click render at maximum depth, use maximum render quality. And that's all that we're going to do for this right now. You can get really detailed in this, but this will produce a really nice product. 
So this is another way that you can use your move shoot move rotator, not just to get high detailed images of the stars, but also to be a unique time lapse rotator. It's really an awesome little unit. And this does apply for pretty much any star tracker. So your Ioptron or your Skywatcher, any of those will perform pretty much these same things. So well, I hope this was helpful. And as always, if you could please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and I'll be coming out with more videos about astrophotography soon. All right, thanks for watching.